Oh boy. Uh -huh. um, the tributes are coming in yeah. uh, from all kinds of people. We have something that was just posted by Ted Sarandos, the head of Netflix on social media. He wrote, Award season's red carpets will never be the same without KTLA Sam Rubin, always having the most fun and always a smile and a laugh. He was a legend in this town. R.I.P. Sam Rubin, we will miss you, sending love to his family. Maybe the most powerful person in all of Hollywood. And I have to tell you that that would be the most painful thing for Ted to, for Sam to know uh, that Ted he's was, so was, mad that he's was, not felt here. that way about him because he was constantly lobbying Netflix to do, uh, yes. to do a red carpet show for them. <laughs> he um, wanted to be invited to their cafeteria. Right, exactly, which is right across the, the, <laughs> the lot for us. Um, Jeremy Parsons, uh, another one of the, the wonderful people who we have the opportunity to come in occasionally to, to fill in for Sam. Uh, Jeremy, it's a rough day for all of us, but I, I know you have special memories as well. I do, and guys, I've been watching actually from Nashville for the past few hours, and you've done an incredible job paying tribute to things. Memories are just flooding. I, I met him, it seems like a thousand years now, when he started at Real Channel. And you know, how much Sam loved the show that he did there, and how much he poured himself into it. And um, I'm just looking through old photos of being with Sam at Sundance when I first got to really hang out with him and observe what you all know, which is Sam's such a workhorse, right? He's doing real channel stuff. He's doing KTLA five hits with Grace Mendoza there at, at, at Sundance. And that was just who he was anytime you saw him and met him. And um, I, I'll never forget the first time he had, that it worked out that I would fill in. Sam gave me, uh, uh, had me, he wanted me to come in and shadow him one day, the day before. And I, I showed up at 5.45 or whatever, and, and, you know, Sam can roll in two minutes before and just do it. He was like, oh, you're here way too early. He's like, just so you know, nothing about this is glamorous, and you can do it in your sleep. And I was like, of course, okay. You know, he downplayed. Only, only he could do it in his sleep. That's how, exactly. how easy he made it seem. And I remember him, he, w he was showing me around, and I, I met some of the people at the desk. At that point, it was early. It was, it was Chris Schauble and some others. And it came up with Chris. Chris was like, hey, have, have you done this? And I, I had never been live before. And I said, oh, I've, no, I've never actually done anything like this before. And Sam kind of looked at me and pulled me aside and said, hey, how about you just don't mention that to anybody else the rest <laughs> of the time you're here, right? Um, he, he, just absolutely incredible and generous in all that. In all and try to figure out what it was. And then I heard the rock and all of that type of thing. And it, was, it made you feel good. Yeah. It made you feel good that Sam Rubin included you in the conversation that morning. Yeah. And I heard you guys talking about it. And you've done a terrific job since 1 o'clock when you made the announcement. But one of the things that always struck me, you know, I've worked at a number of stations around town. And they all had entertainment divisions or whatever. But even over the last 30 plus years, I would always turn to listen to Sam. When you needed that information about Hollywood, the entertainment industry, you just knew what you were gonna get from Sam Rubin. Yeah. Was what you needed to know and then much more. And I wanted to mention what you were talking about, that all of these huge stars would come over to him and act like they knew him so well. And I'm guessing they probably they did. did. Yeah. But what I noticed about Sam is that even these people who you didn't recognize the name, you didn't recognize the face, you'd never seen these young people before. Right. He would welcome them in yes. on the red carpet, make them feel like a million bucks that yeah. he was talking about them. He was more famous often than the yeah, people he exactly. was interviewing. For sure. But you know that when they got home or whenever they went and they knew that they had been interviewed by Sam Rubin and that they may appear on his little package at 10 or 11 o'clock, what a boost to yeah. the ego to yeah. know that Sam was out there. And just knowing him over the years and, and talking to him, and it, it was just, just a pleasant time. Yeah. Whenever you, you interacted with him, I, I've heard it said before, I never saw him in an angry state. No. No. I never saw him mad or heard him no. being mad at anybody. No. And to hear this, I was at home and Kai gave me a call and said, just wanted to give you a heads up before you get here. Yeah. And that the newsroom was a basket case. Yeah. And, you know, and I can only imagine the, what Jess is going through at this point. Yeah. Um, and then to walk in and see all the tears. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's been an awful day. It has been. And, and, uh, and, I, and I've been in touch with Jessica earlier, and, and yeah, it, yeah it, it, it is very difficult. And he was her biggest champion. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think he'd be humbled, actually, by everything that's being said about him. Yes. All these people calling in, all of these messages. I mean, it just shows you 
his appeal was just enormous. And the irony Huge is, oh, the irony God. is, he would often say, "I don't really have any friends in Hollywood, <laughs> you know, real." But the truth is, he he did, and more than and, he knew. Yeah, and but he also knew there was a line at times, and he never wanted to intrude upon someone's kindness. Yeah, well, I think there's some people out there that get into that business that think that they're that star, that they have that uh, celebrity, and they're rubbing shoulders yeah. with these people. Sam was never like that. No. He always seemed to be just the common guy, and these people were stopping by and recognized him. Yeah. And then the questions, and like you were saying before, there may be three or four scripted questions, but he would sell them, keep right, to that, right. and would start talking to these people, but the conversations were always just so entertaining, yeah. and you, you found out things you never knew about yeah. some of these people. And it was always a pleasure just to watch him work. And as hard as he worked, because you know, we work, uh, Kareen, I saw she was out here earlier, yeah. we're on the weekends, yeah. and when they would do these awards shows, and he would be up all day, I'm guessing, doing this, but then he would always stick around and do something for us. Yeah, right. And it, it was just a, a, just a pleasure to know him and work with him and, and see him from time to time, and I just can't imagine what it's going to be like without him. I, I can't that's, either. That's uh, the, the horrible thing about this loss is it's a loss that will continue on every day. Yeah, and you know, certainly someone's going to be picked to come into the entertainment group and, and try to do... And that do. person will have an Huge impossible shoes. job. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can never fill that position. Yeah. No. Because everybody's going to think back to, yeah, I remember That's how Sam, Sam used to do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, Rick, we appreciate you, and I, I know that uh, you're coming in soon to, to do yeah. some more. We'll be and out here talking about them for yeah. all night, basically. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks. It's good to be here. All right. Um, we've, we've been remembering our, our friend Sam Rubin uh, since 1 o'clock this afternoon when, when we broke in to, to finally report on what we had learned. Um, I know we're working on trying to get an interview uh, with with someone uh, overseas. Uh, I'm assuming that hasn't happened yet. I think we're going to go to okay. what? Okay, some more clips of what Sam did best, which is talk to celebrities. Yeah, here's some more examples of that. Yeah. Let me tell you something, man, don't catch the blues. Yeah. Sitting at the KTLA morning news. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what's my name, Wayne Brady? Yeah. Man, 10 times whiter than Slim Shady. Yeah. When I get busy, everybody say, damn. Yeah. Brother got the funk and I'm sitting with Sam. Yeah. What can you do? Hip hop hooray. Yeah. Wayne Brady in the morning on KTLA. Yeah. 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 White yeah. man. Yeah. KTLA boy in the morning. Know what I'm saying? For real. Yeah. My daughter okay. and my daughter's mom, you all the time. Go on, let's talk about me. Yeah, this yeah, is Sam Rubin from Los Angeles. You speak. Well, you, you come on the show. I mean, he's, I, you, he's been on. I, listen, he's, I'm, I'm on the show. If it's good enough time, for him. Listen, I, I'll, I'll be on the show anytime you want. My daughter and her mom, they love it. Okay. Absolutely. But why don't you come on and say hi to him? Tell me. And you, uh, are, are, your people, are your people here? Yes. <laughs> tell your people. I'm, I'm there. They're kicking me out of here before they. Why? Any, I know. Why? This is Sam Rubin. It's hours. This, We've got hours. This to man go. is. This man is the Moses of Hollywood moguls. <laughs> he, he, he is leading us all out at, into the promised land. Uh, the beautiful Rihanna, uh, Riri, or Robin to her friends like me. Okay, now, my. The people I work with on the show, uh -huh. they're like, you can't dance. And you know that's not true. Oh, absolutely. All right, so what move shall we practice? Yeah, she's doing good. <laughs> there, see? He was the absolute worst dancer. <laughs> There's nobody worse. Um, and yet he felt he had rhythm. Yeah, he did. Well, uh, he was willing to try anything. And for a laugh, uh, he did it. We uh, had recently uh, on the program, we, we mentioned the fact that uh, Sam not only did uh, television for us, uh, this was his home base, but he uh, did television in the, in the UK and in Australia. He, we used to joke all the time because he would tell us that off camera that he was famous in Australia. Yes. Uh, that in may fact, or may, whenever may not... an actor came in who was Australian, <laughs> right. he'd be like, well, you must know me from Australia. We may, that may or may not be true that he was famous in Australia, but uh, recently we uh, had from the Today Show in Australia, Richard Wilkins uh, come in uh, with his son, Christian actually, but uh, Richard, I, b I believe we have on the line, Richard, are you there? Yes, you do, sir. Yeah. Richard, uh, a very I'm difficult day for all. Love, sending my love to you all. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And, and back to you, because I know that you had a great affection uh, for Sam, and, and I saw it firsthand when you were sitting right here uh, just, a, a, I don't know, two or three weeks ago. Um, and yeah. I, I, I just, I wonder, you know, we joke about the fact that he, he used to say, oh, he, I'm famous in Australia. Um, and, but he was lo beloved in, in Australia to, to people who watched your program. Well, you know better than me that Sam was just such a great guy and a brilliant broadcaster and so generous. And when, when the big stories broke in, in your neck of the woods, you know, we, Sam was our go-to guy. We used to borrow him from you. And, uh, you know, uh, Sam's career and my career in some ways mirror each other. We've both been around the block a couple of times and... Um, we used to send each other little sort of notes and saw you at the Critics' Choice, man. You know, hey, what did you think of this? What did you think of that? Hey, Nicole's things. You know, there was we we just uh, saw a little bit of each, a little bit of ourselves in each other, I think. And um, Sam was uh, was a part of our family as well. Um, on, sometimes on a daily basis, he'd you know, as soon as he got loose from you lot, he'd. he'd barrel down to our studio on the corner of Sunset and Vine there and, and cross into our shows. And uh, we loved the guy. He was, he was Sam, if I can just say, Sam was always such a joy to talk to. You know better than me. But, you know, if you ask Sam a question, he would often respond. That's a very good point, Richard, you know. Uh, and he was, so, he was so, so lovely and so generous and so warm. And we just had such a great time on air. And as you as you said just a couple of weeks ago, he generously invited uh, me and, and my son Christian, who's living in LA at the moment and trying to you know trying to pursue his career over there. And Sam uh, invited us on, and we had a lovely time with, with, with you with your beautiful team on air. And then with Sam and I and Christian had lunch at the the Chateau, and and that was the last time I saw him um, in person. But uh, I I, I sent on behalf of our team here in Australia, and dare I say that his viewers in Australia, yes, Sam was famous in Australia. <laughs> and famous as a broadcaster, but also famous for being just a, a great guy. And oh. I, I can't imagine what you're all going through today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Richard, it's, it's wonderful. And I, I'm, we are experiencing what you might uh, imagine. We are experiencing our newsroom is devastated. Our, our, our greater family is devastated. And I know because of your friendship that that you were greatly touched by it and uh and i know and uh, on behalf of everyone here i understand you ran a, a special tribute on on your uh network and and we're grateful to you for that it's never it was really good news when the phone starts ringing off the hook uh in the wee small hours here in australia and i i woke to the to the sad news and um the last thing I wanted to do was drag myself out of bed and, and um, be an entertainment reporter talking about the passing of my favorite entertainment reporter. But I, I did it out of um, respect for Sam and uh, pride on national television here in Australia for your colleague. So mm -hmm. there you go. He was a part of your family, too. Indeed. Much loved. All right. Thank you. Richard, thank you, and we, we look forward to seeing you on your next visit to, to see Christian or, or any time. You are welcome here again, my friend. Thank you. Very kind. Thank you, sir. All the best. All right. You're watching KTLA Los Angeles. We're uh, bringing you continuing coverage of the death of our colleague, Sam Rubin, uh, died at the age of 64. Um, the e exact circumstances of his death, uh, we have not been filled in on, but uh, it was about 12.15 or 12.30 when it started to be reported, and we brought it, reported, we brought it to you here uh, after talking with his relatives, his family. Leaves behind a wife and four children, and uh, just an incredible record in terms of, of his career here in Los Angeles. We often, uh, in our business, uh, one of the horrible things that we have to do is prepare what's called an obituary, a story that runs in the event of someone's death and you prepare it in advance for people who are of advanced age and, and who uh, are Needless suffering to say, we from- did, We did not have that. Right, and, and that's what I was going to say is that in the case of Sam Rubin, obviously we did not have something like that, but uh, Kareen Winter has kindly put together a story of some highlights 
of Sam's uh, amazing career here at KTLA, and we wanted to share that with you. Always very exciting. Channel 5, the flagship affiliate. His infectious smile. Here in Hollywood. I'm Sam Rubin. Spirited laughter. Because we've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> and high energy. Is that, is that the, forget all these awards. For decades, since 1991, audiences all across the Southland woke up to this familiar face. And that 2011 has featured a slew of bad movies. Sam Rubin. He was a staple on the KTLA Morning News, but for viewers, he was much more. So much more from the Critics' Choice Awards. An important award is for Best Foreign Language Film. The 91st Academy Awards. As a fixture in Hollywood, you'd often catch him schmoozing with celebs on the red carpet or chatting it up with stars on set. Sam's welcoming demeanor made everyone feel comfortable. It really was like talking to a friend. The TV veteran didn't just deliver stories and conduct interviews. He captivated viewers with a signature style that made him an industry legend. Most fans first became familiar with Penny Marshall. From award shows. Critics' Choice Awards were here at Barker Hanger. To reporting on blockbuster news involving celebrities. Sam covered the entertainment industry like no other journalist here in Los Angeles. Tomorrow on the KTLA Morning News, much more from the Golden Globes. He was experienced. He was trusted and so beloved. Sunday night here in Beverly Hills. Sam launched his own production company, SRE Inc., which produced hundreds of hours of broadcast and cable programming. He received numerous awards over his lengthy career, including a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Southern California Broadcasters Association. Sam also had a passion off air, something dear to his heart. The MS-150 Beta Bike Tour, which helped literacy programs and supported LA schools. And uh, among the nice things about working here for a little bit is your kids, of course. Perhaps uh, Sam's biggest love, show. his family, who he always beamed about. His wife, Leslie, and their children, Colby and Darcy, and former wife, Julie, and their daughters, Perry and Rory. Sam lived and worked here in Southern California almost his entire life. He was born in San Diego in 1960 went to Occidental College, and would eventually make his amazing career right here on Channel 5. Reporting from the Oscars, I'm Sam Rubin. Sam Rubin became Channel 5. In many ways, the heart and soul of KTLA, a more than three-decade-long run. Not to date myself here, does anybody remember when you used to dress up to go on the plane? It was like a big deal. This was his last show appearance this week, and in typical Sam fashion, he cracked jokes and flashed smiles. Many will remember him as a news icon, but to those who truly knew his talent, the bigger-than-life personality, Sam Rubin represented so much more. He lived life to the fullest, owning every moment, the highs and lows, while bringing others along for the ride. In the newsroom, I'm Sam Rubin. I can't believe that's, uh, the, you know, we're never gonna hear that lockout live yeah. again. I'm Sam Rubin. Um, we have uh, a, another person who's coming, uh, who's joining us right now, who uh, Sam had great affection for, uh, Jolie Fisher. Uh, Jolie, you're on the program with us on, on many occasion, and you know how much Sam loved you. Oh my gosh, I am having an out-of-body experience right now. I am going to try to keep it together. I've been watching you all, and you're doing such a, an amazing job of remembering him. And I want to echo what so many people have said, like you were the only person in the room, you were the biggest star, it didn't matter who you were. I could text Sam and tell him I want to talk about mental health, and he would say, what time, which spot do you want? Yeah. Um, I recently realized that he's, he was a school dad and, and ran into him at our high school where he was so proud of his kids and in the high school musical. And I just, um, you know, Henry Winkler and Greg Brunberg and Jerry O'Connell said it all. It's like he was our first person that we looked for on the red carpet. He, um, it's just, this is such a devastating loss. I did want to throw in one thing that, that nobody else will know is that I reached out to Sam and I said, do you want to come aboard the SAG Astra board? And he was like, why would I do that? <laughs> what are you asking to get into here, Jolie? And, and when I told him that it would make the lives of broadcasters, because we represent all of you at SAG Astra, make our contracts better, make, make what we, you know, our compensation better, make it safer, make it all those things. 
he was like, why the heck not? And, and ran for our board and has served alongside of us. That this will be, a, this would have been his second term. And I, I, I can't believe what I, I can't believe this day. I can't believe this day. Neither can we. No, we, we feel the, exactly the same way, Jolie. It, it, uh, you know, the news just slaps you. And um, we, 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 I, I'm personally just going through waves of, uh, of, of enjoying these moments of laughter, uh, thinking about Sam, and then being overcome with great grief um, at the thought we're of... Take, we're all going to take a, a collective breath tonight and just yeah. shed some light on the family and all of you that are there. And I can't imagine what it's like to sit there on air and watch all of this go by. And I just send you so much love and, and thanks for hearing me out. Thank you, Jolie. We appreciate you. Uh, we love thanks so Cameron. much. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. you. You know, and, and that love the, of, of celebrities like Jolie Fisher uh, was also felt from our, our, our viewers who, who really did love Sam Rook. No, they did. They did. Um, you know, he, just by virtue of being on the air, for so many years, yeah. a lot of people would recognize him, and I would be with him from time to time, like at a Dodger baseball game or something like that. And he would always take the time to talk to people. Oh yeah. And he was he you know he was never you know flippant about needing to go somewhere else. He he spent time you know he asked people their names and he made that connection with people, which is so important. Yeah, and sometimes really would cared. highlight that person on the air as well. Just a, a chance meeting would uh, would sometimes bring yeah. that person on the air. Sandra Mitchell, you you've been uh, uh, sort of looking at some of the outpouring of of love from our viewers. And I'm just curious what they've been saying. I mean, I think the first thing that so many of us do when we hear any kind of news, right? We go to KTLA, we go to our phones, we check on the conversation, what's going on yeah. and, and how do we connect? And there has been this tremendous outpouring online as well. So many people just have this connection with Sam Rubin and they just went to their phones today, went to social media. They want to share that. Uh, the last time I checked our, our KTLA Instagram account, more than 5,000 people have already reached out. So mm. we are hurting here at KTLA today, but we know, we recognize that our viewers are hurting as well. And here's some, some of what they're saying. I am devastated, been watching Sam since I was a little girl. KTLA will never be the same. That's from Michaela. Another viewer writing uh, on social media, Sam is family in LA and the epitome of Hollywood entertainment news. Wow, rest in peace, Sam. I am in tears, 